A big thanks goes out to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Today, I wanna to take you on a bit of a trip back to the early 90s when my passion for nature photography found a home in local public gardens. Now, back then, I didn't have much money for travel, so I spent countless hours in these gardens trying to hone my skills as a nature photographer. And little did I know at the time that these humble beginnings would eventually lead to a long career in editorial garden photography. Now, after a couple of years of photographing in public gardens, I had built up what I thought at the time was a solid body of work. So I began submitting my photos to gardening magazines, uh, hoping to get a few published. Now, I started off really slowly with the occasional image sale, but with a bit of persistence, it eventually did pay off. And as time went on, my work was featured more often leading to assignments that pretty much took me uh, to private and public gardens right across Canada and the United States. Now, for nearly 25 years, I photographed gardens for magazines with hundreds of my photos published across North America. And within that time, I learned a lot. So today, I want to share some of my knowledge with you. Now, I won't claim that my approach to photography is anything groundbreaking, but what did set me apart was the consistency in my work. No matter the challenges, I could always deliver something usable for each magazine that I worked for. So without further delay, let's dive into my top five tips for garden photography. These are the techniques that help me create compelling images and hopefully can do the same for you. All right, as with all tips, we need to start somewhere. So here is tip number one, and this tip will actually work in any form of photography, not just garden photography. So it's a good one to uh, keep in the back of your mind. Experiment with unusual angles and perspectives. By changing your viewpoint, you can turn an ordinary shot into something extraordinary. As an example, try getting down low for a ground level shot. Uh, this perspective makes plants appear larger and more dramatic. It's almost like seeing the garden from an insect's eye, revealing details that you might otherwise miss. Conversely, try shooting from above to get a bird's eye view of the garden. Uh, this high angle will often showcase the garden's layout, and if it has any patterns, larger patterns, it'll showcase them beautifully. Give it a try. All right, tip number two. Tell a story with smaller vignettes. So what do I mean by that? Well, instead of capturing the entire garden in one shot, try focusing on individual flowers or perhaps unique plant arrangements or even interesting corners within the garden. What will end up happening is that these detailed shots will end up conveying the garden's character and mood more effectively than, say, just a single wide shot. I remember when I first started photographing gardens, my uh, initial reaction was, especially if it was a really beautiful garden, was to take one shot of the whole garden. And I did do that. But what I found more effective is taking lots of individual images around the garden. And then as a whole, or as a, a small group of images, they would tell more of a story about that whole garden. A big thanks goes out to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. I've been using Squarespace for a few years now, and what I enjoy about using the platform is its elegant design templates and ease of use. With Squarespace, you can start a completely personalized website with the new guided design system, Squarespace Blueprint. Choose from professionally curated layouts and styling options to build a unique online presence from the ground up tailored to your brand or business and optimized for every device. 
easily launch your website and get discovered fast with integrated, optimized SEO tools so you show up more often to more people and grow the way you want. Whether you sell physical goods, digital content or services, Squarespace has the tools to start selling online. Make checkout seamless for your customers with simple but powerful payment tools, accept credit cards, PayPal and Apple Pay. And in eligible countries, offer customers the option to buy now and pay later with Afterpay or Clearpay. If this sounds appealing, why not head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the code Adam Gibbs to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Tip number three, incorporate artificial objects for a human element. I often found that if I included, uh, say, a statue or a bird bath or, or anything man-made, then that was a really great subject to draw the, the viewer's eye to. And then if it was surrounded by plants or flowers or trees or whatever, then that was kind of an added bonus. So adding elements like garden tools, benches or sculptures provides context and scale and it'll make your images more relatable to a lot of people that view them. Tip number four, capture close-ups and patterns in nature. By photographing close-up shots, uh, you often reveal many of the intricate details and textures that you might find in, say, flowers and leaves. So try looking for patterns uh, like symmetry. Uh, you might find them in petals or perhaps spirals in a fern. Things like this can really create visually striking images, but they also relate to what I was saying in uh, tip number two. By adding these to your mini portfolio, you can often tell more of a story about that whole garden than again just by taking one image of the whole garden so it, by adding these it gives you more context it'll just give you more variety and more interest for people to look at And finally, tip number five, use overcast light to enhance colors and minimize distractions. Now that's not to say that I don't enjoy beautiful light in the morning or the evening. The problem that I found with a lot of the gardens that I did photograph is that they're either surrounded in shrubs or trees. So you might get beautiful light outside the fence, but within the garden, everything was in the shade. So it didn't really work anyway. Uh, and over the years, I, I came to really enjoy photographing in overcast light because it was just easier to work with. It was just like a big soft box. It would get rid of harsh shadows. It would just bring out all the colors in the foliage and the flowers. And the problem with bright sunny days is that the contrast would be too high and it would wash out a lot of those, uh, those colors in the, in the foliage and flowers. And it, it would just make the garden look busier than it, than it should. So I would highly recommend if you haven't tried it, Try photographing your garden or a public garden when it's kind of dull out. Uh, you'll, you'll notice that the colors really pop and uh, it'll just be so much easier on the eyes. So there you have it, my top five tips for garden photography. Experiment with angles, tell stories with vignettes, include human elements, 
capture close-ups and patterns and use overcast light to your advantage. Whether shooting your garden or exploring public ones, these techniques will help you create stunning images. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you found these tips helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, be sure to head on over to my website at adamgibbs.com if you'd like to support my channel further. Till next time. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.